follows. You've got uh, Paddington, who now is the clear favourite at 2.1. 2.25 for Emily Upjohn, then Dubai on a 12.0, Westman Blows 26.0. Look, I don't have a bet in this. Um, I, I know who I would side with, but I, I thought a ding-dong argument between the two of you would, would be best. So, Charlie Post, take it away. In the blue corner. In the blue corner, yeah. As in, uh, look, I mean, it's it, it, it's an intriguing matchup, isn't it? The three-year-olds against the older generation. But yeah, I've come down with Paddington. I think, you know, since he got beat at, at Ascot on his first start of his career, he's, he's, he's unbeaten, he's not looked back. And I just love the way that he keeps progressing from race to race. And I thought his performance in the St. James Palace when he beat Chaldean was 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 um, massively improved, even from the Irish Guineas. And, and he just looks to be going the right way. His style of racing suggests the Mana quarter shouldn't be an issue. He's out of a Mongeau mare as well, which, which adds further weight to that argument and I feel there's just more upside to him than Emily Upjohn. I've got, they've got the massive, most massive amount of respect for her and, and the way she's been campaigned. I also wonder much as she can race keenly, but her best form has all been over a mile and a half. And the big thing when you look through this is, is there's a distinct lack of pace. You know, uh, Simon Christopher Tors, West Wind Blows has gone forward before, but isn't a confirmed out and out front runner. Aidan O'Brien's mentioned that Ryan will go forward on Paddington. And, and I just wonder if he'll be able to dictate this the way that he wants to go sensible, you know, use that uses pace as a marler. And, and it might just suit him better than Emily Upjohn. It's it's a narrow call, but yeah, I'm, I'm Paddington for me. All right. And um, in the red corner, Ed Quigley. Yeah, yeah. Very eloquently put, to be honest with you, from, uh, from Charlie there. Yeah, again, I'm... If pushed, I'd side with Emily up, John. I just wonder if she might just have, I say staffed as it sounds, a bit too much zip uh, in the sense of, obviously, Paddington is going up to, to 10 furlongs for the first time. So he's going into unknown territory stamina-wise. Emily up, John, Charlie alludes to, has been doing the, the bog for running over a mile and a half. But she does have that kind of 10 furlong zip in the locker. She did absolutely bolt up, albeit in a novice event. Um, last year over this course of distance. And she's not short sure of gears. And I, I, I agree with Charlie to an extent and that tactics are going to be the the big conundrum here. Um, I'd imagine Paddington and West Wind blows go forward and it, it's a game of chess with the other two in behind. I, I mean, it's a marginal call. I would be with Emily up, John. I just think with that that um, that chat for a rainy day about the mayor's allowance and everything, um, swinging it in her favour potentially. I, 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 I'm not got a strong view. What I have got a strong view on is I'm, Unlike you, Tom, who, uh, you know, you're an out-and-out -out Twitter troll. Uh, if this was the national hunt season, there'd be absolute meltdown. Four-runner race on a Saturday, Group 1, game's gone, it's on its knees. <laughs> cancel it, cancel it, you know, all this kind of nonsense. Where are Nicky Henderson's runners? I mean, it's absolutely pathetic, this, isn't it? Uh, the, the Eclipse, four runners. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, it's a spectacle. It leaves me a bit cold. But in terms of uh, four betting proposition, uh, but anyway, Emily, I'm going with whoever goes off SP uh, as outsider of the two between Emily Upjohn and Paddington. And I think Emily Upjohn uh, in receipt um, of weight from the other two uh, with her mayor's allowance. Uh, she is a tentative selection, given that I think she's got the versatility over 12 or 10 furlongs. And, and, and I suppose a final point as well, perhaps her... Uh, preparation for this, I suppose. I'd imagine she's been targeted at this, whereas it feels like a little bit of an afterthought with Paddington in the sense of he, he is in, on just such a roll at the moment. I think they're just going to let him keep rolling, if you see what I'm saying. Uh, I can't imagine a month ago the Eclipse was probably uh, at the forefront of, of Bally Doyle's plans. Uh, you know, he's turned out just over two weeks after his, his race at Royal Ascot, whereas Emily Upjohn has been teed up for this and given a month off since uh, winning the coronation on comeback when seeing off Westover. So, yeah, tentative vote to Emily up, John. But it'd just be fascinating to see the, the game of chess between Will Buick and uh, Ryan Moore and how that all unfolds. Um, well done for getting the jump season in there, first of all. <laughs> Very good. The, the difference being that the flat season has, good, has, has more regular good racing, I guess. So... Um, we're not long after Ascot, so the four-runner race doesn't feel so bad. Whereas it is, we get fed it more in drips in the jump season. So when you do get a smaller field, you're like, what? <laughs> um, I hear you. I hear you. 
Uh, and you may have seen the banner saying "Not long now" scrolling along the bottom from Daniel Hussey, which frankly is disgraceful. Yeah, and I know. But so, no, on a serious point, I've I've got the Novak Djokovic Jerry Colom double because Jerry Colom can't lose the Gold Cup. So I'm just what I'm doing is just I'm just finding everything I can, like every ever surgery I can, just to double it up with him. So Can somebody get um, him out, get him out. This is an absolute disgrace. Thanks. Absolute disgrace. He's gone. Bye. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Oh, he's been brought back. Yeah. Four to six certainty in the tennis, and just double it up with whatever everything else. But anyway, yeah. Uh, the only thing I'll add to the coral eclipse is um, I was all out to back Emily Upton. The hood off just worries me because of her antics at Ascot last year. But I do think I'd make her favourite personally. But the hood off means I'm a no bet. Uh, good. We move on to. We're going to go back to Sandown now to the charge at one fifty. And if I was organised, I'd have got the prices up. Uh, we have got Anaf in there at seven point zero, as is Marsh, but nice and open. This Equilateral is seven point five, as is Get Ahead Equality nine point zero, Time to Play nine point zero, Rarcel eleven point zero. Chaps, I was very tempted with with Rarcel off the back of his run last year. I have come down on Marshman. Three-year-olds have got a good record in it. I don't like a nap, personally, given his run style. Drawn 11, bar one meeting this year, and they do move that rail in the middle of the track. Uh, one meeting this year, I think the first or the second, you wanted to be off the rail, but since then you wanted to be bang on it. Drawn 11, it's probably better than he, if he was drawn one, but still, he's going to have to make up ground on the outside. I don't love that. Uh, Marshman won't be too far away. It, for all it's a stiff five, it's really difficult often to make up ground. And I think this track will suit better than Ascot did last time. I thought 7.0 was very fair. But the likes of Equality and Rarsell did interest me, Ed, quickly. Yeah, I think there's a few of us singing from the uh, same hinge sheet here. I'm I'm going to take a chance on Rarsell at the prices. Um, I think this is a slightly deeper race than last year's renewal. I mean, when you put the two side by side, you know, on official figures, there are better horses in here against Rasul uh, this time round. But uh, I, I think he's been a horse with lots of valid excuses uh, this season. Uh, obviously, we, uh, he ran really well on his comeback on a suitable soft ground uh, at Newmarket. And then uh, there was the draw bias of all draw biases, wasn't there, at that Haydock meeting at the end of May, uh, where he may as well have been declared an on-runner when he trailed in. He ran a really good race uh, when trying to win the Achilles stakes again. Um, just touched off in third. But the kind of pace was split all across the track again. It was a bit of a muddling affair. I thought he ran an absolute stormer. And then last time at the King Stand, you could forget that, um, you know, to put it bluntly, he was out of his depth at that level. He's the defending champion. This is his race. He won it last year in stool six. Well, he's uh, he's got stool five here. So it's more or less uh, kind of lightning striking twice, I hope. I say we know he acts over course and distance. The ground uh, should touch upon as they did have quite a bit of rain earlier in the week. Um, I think at the time of recording, it was good to soft, good in places on the sprint course, but it is drying up all the time. I think it's due to be 27 degrees Friday into Saturday uh, in the Isha venue. So uh, ground getting as quick as possible will suit Rasel. And uh, for a beat, a horse who's been there and done it, I just thought with a race full of horses who bring question marks in some shape or form, um, I, yeah, I'd side with him at the prices uh, personally. So yeah, Rasel win and place and my selection for the Mick Appleby team. Charlie, yeah, not a lot much more to add. I mean, like 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 um, Ed said, to, to me it was just price related. I, I thought this was a a really open race where you could give chances to plenty, and also you could pick holes in plenty as well. And and Russell coming here as as the the winner of this race last year, I liked his his run at Haydock. As Ed said, ask it, you can almost write off, and and there's reasons to believe that he could just be coming to his peak. And and I, I think this. This this trip at Sandown suits him really well, Ed. So yeah, uh, Tom. So yeah, Russell for me, and it, and with the price, he's he's a win and place play as well. Uh, yeah, he's a, a fair enough price at eleven point zero. Agree with that. We kick on to a really difficult handicap, the Challenge Class Two over a mile in Demnify now with Alice Haynes. Is seven point zero, seven point five for Barotto, Uzo eight point five Dutch decoy. And Skeptic at 9.0, uh, bigger price, 10.0, sorry, it's bigger price as the rest. I haven't looked who we've gone for here. Three different horses, I suppose, unsurprisingly. You are with the horse that ran in the Hunt Cup last time, Charlie. Actually went off favourite. Yeah, Peroto. Uh, I mean, he's had the two starts for Roger Berry. And um, I, I was with him in, in the on the Victoria Cup when he, when he ran a reasonable first start for the yard. 
And then he ran again. He ran okay behind Jimi Hendrix in 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 the Hunt Cup. As in, I ju I just feel that I just can't desert him because I've, I've been with him a couple of times this year already, and I think he's going to strike and drop in somewhere. That the hood first time I, I didn't really know what to make of that. Uh, I, I'd be hard pushed to say it's a positive, but it's on there anyway. Uh, Roger Verin's also going well. I think Tom Marquand has, has rode him once and and. And he ran well for him there. And he's won his only start for Oto at Sandown as well. So it's an ultra competitive race. But it's more that, like I say, I've, I've been with him on his two starts this year. And I'm not, gonna, I'm not about to jump ship now. Uh, yeah, hooded for the first time. 7.5, Ed. Yeah, tricky old race. I'm going for a thoroughly exposed individual. But one who just seems to save uh, his best for this course. And that is Maysong. Uh, only ran four days ago at Hamilton when just narrowly touched off. Uh, doesn't have any secrets from the handicapper. And in fact, on the figures, will need a career best effort. But uh, does come alive at this venue. Uh, form figures, of course, a distance of one, one and two. Uh, Sandown, as we know, very quirky track. Uh, if you go well here, you go well here, for want of a better phrase. And uh, this horse is first time regards to ground as well. So I'm not really bothered. What happens with underfoot conditions is one on heavy, is one on good to firm. Uh, comes live at this venue. Tommy Jakes takes seven pounds off the Alice Haynes team to try and negate that kind of career high uh, figure, if you like. I think May Song uh, in the winner place markets. May Song hit the frame. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, Tommy Jakes in for his second ever winner. And uh, he's only uh, 27 rides, but he takes off seven. Winner at the track when last seen there. I, God, I went around the houses here. Um, I thought there's not a lot of pace on, so that worried me slightly for my selection. I thought on a line through that spirit catcher could be interesting. I might end up backing the horse depending on on the ground. Um, I think the the quicker the better for staying on the pace. So if it does come up quick, I, I think spirit catcher could be interesting. But intelligent is all of a sudden quite a quite a fair mark if you put a line through the run last time, which was really poor. I don't know what happened because mm. um, he'd run well in the Hunt Cup the year before. Was he, he was probably just about drawn on the wrong side, given how the race developed because they didn't go hard enough his side. But he ran an absolute stinker for he was closest to the stands rail. Um, maybe the ground was too quick. I don't, I don't know. It was quick at Ascot all week, wasn't it? But other than that, prior to that, he put in a really good effort. And if you look at his form after the Hunt Cup last year, it's he was second to a subsequent group one scorer. So I think he's worth backing at the prices, definitely. Um at what was he? Four fifteen point zero, something like that. Anyway, I think he's I think he's worth the bet. For all I'm not certain the track and the run of the race is absolutely going to suit. He's just too well treated not to back. Okay, move on to the distaff. Uh 15.0 intelligent, incidentally. Uh, the distaff, three year old Phillies here. Ed, straight off the bat, who do you like? I'm just going with the, the, the highest rated. Um, I actually think maybe a non-runner. I'm getting the news coming through. I was going to go with Breeze. Uh, I think is a doubt according to what I'm being told. So um, in the case of Breeze not being a runner, my views, in the words of Duncan Ballantyne on Dragon's Den, I'm out. I'm, I'm going to sit this one out and leave it to Charlie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, she was, she was in it about two hours ago. So there yeah. you are. She's not now. Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, uh, again, like Ed said, that there's there's really only three on ratings that can, that can win this race. Um, I think just looking at price I got up in front of me, and then Bridestone for the the Goslins and William Buicks also in in the equation. But I came down with Magical Sunset. Um, you know, she's been pretty highly tried this year. She you know she kept good company, uh, but she ran really well in the Sandringham on her first start a mile and, and won her group up the far side. And and yeah, as in it. I think that seemed to suit her really well, and, and I think she can make further progress with with, with uh, at this trip. Uh, Ryan Moore's on top, which is never a negative, and and it was just a case of I just thought she presented a bit more value, you know, the, than the other two. She does she doesn't have a lot of ground to make up on the favourite Breeze, who it sounds like is out anyway. And so yeah, went magical sunset, and if she was seven point five eight point zero, which she probably isn't going to be now, I'd have backed her in the win and place market as well. The other one I just thought was quite interesting, just because it seems like a weird thing to do, was Mystic Pearl for the, the Haggis team, you know, rate 78 in here. Mm. He did sort of similar last year with a, a filly called Queen Animatu that actually ran poorly in this, but then went on to pick up a couple of listed races. So I won't be back in Mystic Pearl, but I'll be keeping an eye on her to see how she runs because 
just seems bizarre for a trainer William Haggis' stature to to be you know running horse rate seventy eight in a race like this unless he's just trying to nick a bit of cheap black type. Yeah, you'd imagine he is, but I agree, it's a strange one, um, given that she's got so much to find. Yeah, and uh, Queen Anamatu did last year. She was only rated about 80, 82 when she ran in this. And, and then, like I say, them beyond it ended up proving herself up to sort of listed company. So I'll, I'll just keep a watching brief on her. Um, so 5.0 now for Magical Sunset. And yeah. <clears throat> two, uh, 3.5, sorry, for Stenton Glide at my selection, who obviously with Breeze in there was second favourite. I'll still back her, um, just just small stakes. Uh, mainly the yard are in such better form than when this filly was running earlier on this year. She was when she ran at Newbury, she ran a good race behind Remarque. Um, for all Remarque was much better because she drifted it across the trap. I quite like her, and then she ran no race at the Guineas, but it was it was probably softer ground than ideal. She went to Germany and ran well. Um, she won't be too far off the the pace again. I just don't think you want to be at Sandown and. The yard are flying along now, having had a really quiet time of it. So small stakes, Stenton Glider for me. 